Volkswagen Chiron 2012 um, 2 liter TDI engine. I'm gonna try to replace EGR valve and cooler today, which is behind underneath there behind turbo. I didn't plan to do this video, but then I thought, yeah, why, why not? I'm gonna be quick as possible. I mean, for the video, just cover you with um, uh, key points. Together with the GR, I'm thinking to do to replace this subframe bushing. There we go. This one, it's all cracked. It's all destroyed. And we're gonna replace it today. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the subframe. I'm halfway through. I've removed the lower arm. It's quite simple. Sorry, my shaking hands. One bolt through here, two bolts in here. There is one bolt that goes through here. Remove that. Then uh, on the other side, then uh, we're gonna undo this bolt as well. Now we will remove two, these two as well. So we'll take this arm out. Then we'll have to disconnect the power steering rack from the subframe. It held on three bolts, 16 mil. One, I've, I've put those in, so I don't lose them. So I make sure that I put bolt, bolts where they are. 16 mil bolt, two. And on the other side, there is just one. There's just empty hole. Don't know what for, but there is three. So one, two, three. Then we have four big 18 millimeter bolts that hold the subframe. One, two, and those are quite deep. I've taken them out already. One and two. These ones are going through the hole of the um, control arm. So I'm gonna take the subframe out. Steering rack will stay connected because it's connected to the st steering wheel there. This is right-hand drive, by the way, so if you're wondering why the steering is on this side. So let's take the subframe out and I'll show you how I'm gonna do it. Oh yes, of course, we're gonna have to remove this little 13 millimeter that holds the exhaust exhaust bracket and of course don't forget to remove this little cable out of this bracket that is the um, oil level sensor so we just take it out of here there we go so that we don't break it and then subframe we're just gonna go down. So once again, there are four bolts that, four big, you won't miss it. Four big bolts like this, and there's inside there. Four big bolts hold the subframe. Three bolts that hold the steering rack. One, two, three. And then disconnect arms, simple. And then of course we have anti-roll bar which is held by two 13 millimeter little bolts here. This one's here. Or alternatively, I can leave it stuck to the subframe. That's what I'm gonna do because I wanna do, I, I want to have quite a lot of access there today and for to do something else. And so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove this ball, ball joint out of here. So, and I, I'm, I'm gonna keep the anti-roll bar stuck to the subframe. And one more thing before you drop the subframe, there's a little 10 millimeter bolt here, where I'm pointing with my finger, which is holding this wiring for the um, steering rack. We're gonna disconnect that as well. As I took the subframe out, I've discovered that the anti-roll bar goes over the bush, so I'm gonna remove the uh, anti-roll bar disconnected from the subframe. Just two bolts here, two bolts here, 13 mil on this side. Little thing, there are some washers here on a subframe that holds to the body, so make sure you don't lose these washers, because I'm gonna turn it around. I'll just put, it, put them aside somewhere. Next thing we are going to do is remove these to, I think there's 16. Basically, it's a protection for the drive shaft. And also, for the easier, better access, we're gonna disconnect drive shaft on this end. We're gonna leave it that end. You can take it out completely if you want, it's up to you. 
Well, I don't think it will be necessary. We just swing it over and rest it on this arm if it goes that low. But anyway, we'll just take it out of the way out of here. We'll take this cover off and we'll take the drive shaft off. So this is our situation now. We've removed the um, drive shaft, only this end. Just moved it away. The drive shaft is just along here, hanging on the control arm. Six bolts were holding the drive shaft, nice and easy. So we have plenty of space here now to access almost anything. Even with as much space I wanted to have, I don't think I need to remove the steering rack. So this is what our subframe look like with the anti-roll bar. Uh, four bolts, big ones, one, two, three, four. 18 mil that hold to the body then uh, this three hold the um, steering rack there's these are 16 mil and there are 13 mil four little ones that hold this link these are from the um, suspension bush I just keep bolts in the same place Next thing we are going to do is remove all this business that uh, to get access from the top. So we start from this plastic air intake, then air filter box, and then pipe that goes into the turbo, and then at the one at the bottom that comes out of the turbo. First we're going to remove this. I've got this table cable tie fix because <laughs> of my uh, this little plastic cap doesn't hold the top is broken need to renew it anyway nevertheless the torx screws here one and two then we remove this and the plastic pipe this oh. once we got this bit out of the way then we're gonna take the um, air filter box out there's a five millimeter allen down there that holds it and there is two clips then we remove this breather pipe just pull it and then disconnect this connector by pulling this gray bit out and then pressing it and then when you squeeze that clamp my advice from experience don't um, move it along the pipe this clamp leave it on a plastic otherwise it will go too far and then you need massive pliers to put it back in so leave it on a plastic just take the box out there we go air filter box is out Leave the clamp on this one, don't put it down the line because it will go too far in. Then we have to remove these two little cables. And then there is a T30, T30 little bolt here, this one here. So, and then you take it out and pull this hose of the turbo. And also pull this breather pipe away by squeezing these plastics like that. When removing pipe off, make sure you don't lose your o ring. Preferably, it's always nice to renew them, but. I don't have it and then we have this is our turbo intake that shiny one and then it goes there is a pipe that goes out of turbo and it goes along along there along there and then it goes into intercooler comes out of intercooler and comes into the entrance yay so we don't because this is plastic this is all attached to the engine we don't need to remove it it's just what we're gonna do we remove these pipe here so we'll, we're gonna loosen this clamp here and there are two t30s one here another one at the bottom you can see it but it's there trust me so we remove these two bolts loosen this clamp and then remove this bit from here to here okay as usual with these 
check that your uh, o-ring this green one is in place and put it somewhere in a safe place now we have uh, quite a lot of access here there is a little pipe that goes oh, yeah, let me reach it I'll give you more detail base basically there is a pipe that goes from EGR to the front and then carries on along here into the intake so there's one pipe here another pipe at the back I'll show you from the back of all the access what else we have to do at the front here is this is our DPF that goes as exhaust after so we're gonna remove the sensor unclip this heat protection unclip sensor from one of these connect connectors remove the clamp from the turbo then there is a 13 millimeter bolt just where are you? just here so we're gonna remove that as well and then a DPF held by a bracket at the bottom once it's off we can move it aside we don't need to remove it completely we just move it aside to get access to EGR which is under the turbo I just made all these wires loose there is one clamp that holds four wires and another one is just plastic there so just I made them loose I don't, I don't think we need to remove them by the way while doing this obvious co common sense make sure the engine is cold because all this business gets really hot including turbo and the engine itself what we're gonna do we're gonna remove this breather pipe clamp here squeeze it pull it off just to give a bit more room for the DPF so once we loosen all this so the sensor goes 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 that's the one so we're gonna disconnect this plug and remove the sensor so we have more access to the clamp you don't really need to remove sensor but I'll just do it because I like more space before I move I remove the sensor I'll remove these three little 10 millimeter nuts and take the heat shield off DPF anything that just to make it more space so with the heat shield off it looks a bit tinier I took the sensor out then we have five millimeter allen bolt here uh, then there is a clamp that goes around this bit clamp can be stuck a little bit even if you remove the uh, bolt because of the heat it's getting so just give it a few taps I'll show you what it looks like as I take it off and then there is a 13 mil bolt here remove this one and then we'll go to the bottom this is what this clamp look like it has three parts that can get stuck to the uh, that connection between turbo and EGR uh, turbo and DPF sorry so give them a little tabs and they will come off I'm gonna replace this anyway because my new EGR unit comes with all the brackets and gaskets just to keep it on warranty so it's done by procedure that bolt is out 13 mil so we're gonna go to the bottom now disconnect what that holds what holds DPF there and then move it aside so here we are at the bottom this is our particulate filter view from the bottom it, it's held by the bracket like this 213 millimeter nuts and there's two more at the top there which is more difficult to access but we'll see I'm gonna remove these two nuts and see if we can we can move this particular filter aside it's all loose here as you can see so there is a little bendy bit here make sure you don't damage it so you don't put too much stress on it so with the PF moved aside we can have access to our EGR which is this little shiny thing so this is how it works this is turbo manifold exhaust gases part of exhaust gases come out out of here through this pipe and go into EGR here 
they get cooled in the cooler which is we're going to remove that tiny bit here and they come out of here and go to the front and then I showed you before where it goes from the front so we're gonna remove these pipes on this end we have looks like a 10 mil nuts or whatever they nuts I think they 10 it doesn't matter you'll find the proof size so we remove this and it's torques here torques torques and should be torques at the top there so we remove these two pipes these are gas pipes so they we're not expecting anything leaking out of them and just remove them two pipes this one and this one here very easy so this is where we are both pipes are out these are 12 millimeter bolts uh, not torques 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 to 30 this one to the at the top is easier to get access from the top that's why we removed all these pipes from turbo so you get from the top and then i'm gonna remove this pipe eventually as well because my egr comes with all new gaskets and clamps to stay it on warranty so but we'll do that later let's go back to our egr these are two holes for pipes coming in coming out then hence it's the cooler we've got two pipes of coolant coming in coming out one of them is this one that's the one and there is a clamp um what we what you can do you can squish it with something you know the jam it so you don't lose coolant and then take it off what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just drain the coolant because it's always nice to refresh coolant so i'm gonna pour some more coolant in and then uh, there is another pipe that one there let me see if i can yeah that's the one on this end it comes in and then that's the one this is the one so that's your dpf and there is a pipe cl another clamp and then it it there is a metal power pipe that is a part of the egr so you disconnect here and we disconnect here and we're gonna drain the coolant so i'm gonna put the tray underneath easy peasy and before i drain it i'll probably reconnect this oil sensor so we get so in case if it leaks here it doesn't get fill up with the coolant i've put some rubber glove here as well just as a protection and let's disconnect this clump and drain the coolant with all that disconnected it didn't leak that much coolant actually it's just a little bit so we all safe we'll top it up later on anyway with hoses disconnected all we've got left here is the electric connector this this one here on EGR and then EGR itself is held by four bolts like this it's Torx T32 at the bottom just find them where they are and two at the top and then you should be able to take it out there is a bit of an oil leak coming probably from the turbo somewhere not that leak it's just few drops and they just get collected i think it could be those o-rings to blame so therefore i'm um, i'm gonna replace them this car has done 320,000 miles as i'm filming now the connector is all clean, so I was worried maybe it does the connector that it causes the problem, but connector is all happy. So let's remove these bolts and pull it out. Should be easy. There is quite a lot of space. Enough to take it out. Oh yeah, and one more thing. We pull this um, vacuum little hose. As I was fiddling with it, pipe came up out of here we'll see what the new unit like if it comes with a new little pipe we'll replace it if not we'll just put this one onto new unit and yes I forgot one more little thing there is a oil pipe 
which is feeding lubricating turbo it goes all the way across this our EGR unit so to, in order to take it out we'll have to remove this pipe so there are two torque screws there as you can see two on the side and there is this one here I'm pointing it with my finger that I'm taking it it holds it in place then bit of this pipe goes to the top I'll show you top as well and then at the bottom we have two banjo bolts here there's one here and there's one here so once we're gonna remove them they may leak some oil not much but little bit so one two those two that's four that one there, that's three, and let's go to the top, I'll show you where it is. And then as it goes up here, there's like a little knot here. I don't know, I'm gonna focus on it. So remove this one here. So, I've removed this little bolt here, and we're left with this big 27 millimeter. I just been to the shop, bought 27 millimeter shortish, quite narrow, so it fits on this one. It's a banjo bolt. Banjo bolt means that it's empty on the inside like that. And there's a hole in the middle, so oil goes through it. That's a banjo bolt. So this one we're gonna remove and then take all this pipe, double pipe, out of the way. Bolt is already leaking some oil. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take out this bolt which holds bracket for these pipes because this pipe's a little bit in the way and maybe there will be a bit more room to play with this bolt. So I'm gonna remove this little see the location? This little bolt here. So I've removed this and I'm gonna remove this little 10 millimeter bolt as well that holds all these metal pipes so I'll just move them out of the way of this bolt so here and follow just pipes and there's like a little bolt here I got the banjo bolt out that's the one also with fancy holes one little update I want, must say we need to remove this 13 mil bolt, not the the one that was here. I think it's not. It's just holding things together. Well, I'll remove it anyway. But there is a 13 millimeter here. We remove it, and then we can take this pipe off. So this is our oil pipe pump out. Two banjo bolts going into here and here. Then we've got to T40, make sure that you use T40 not T30 so you don't damage it inside. So T40, two of them. Gasket is going to be replaced as we do. Then uh, 13 millimeter bolt, bolt that holds it to the turbo. That's it. 13 millimeter bolt, two T40s and two banjos and this one of course on the top that one feeds oil into turbo so when you put it in you just screw it 17 mil nut like that right let's get the EGR out now so this is it we got it out eventually held on four bolts T30s please mind two on the side is slightly longer than two here so this these two are slightly shorter than this one and this one. This is our new unit. And this is what we've got from Volkswagen. I've got a bunch of clamps and gaskets. I'm gonna replace them all to make sure it's all up to standard. So it stays on warranty. And then we get our unit out. There we go. Nice and shiny. 
make sure it's the same same electrical connections everything's happy 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 this is where we're gonna put our vacuum hose on and that's it pretty much we'll just take unclip this gonna swap it over this heat protection and that's it I'm gonna take this pipe out clamp here and two screws to clean it up change gaskets and off we go the um, actual EGR wasn't that dirty what I like about this new VW design is the fact that uh, it's so far away from the intake so it doesn't get any oil so it's all only suit so the pipes don't get clogged up and valve doesn't get clogged up clogged up as well so it's just a mechanical electrical failure which we will probably expect by 320,000 miles right i'm talking too much now thank you for watching put everything back in the reverse sequence off you go when you take the subframe off um it's much easier and drive shaft this kind of drive shaft and subframe so it's not as bad as in some people do and some garages do so there is plenty of access one more thing you need to remember putting subframe back on don't forget about these little gaskets that go here they tend to fall that's it uh, all information i'll put on my website link below the video so there will be step by step with images and you can download pdf description of all this job for you check the uh, link in the description also when you're putting your subframe back on there can be a bit of a play in the subframe so you can put it a little bit to the left to the right you know along these bolts so uh, your wheel alignment probably will go off so it's worth coming to the tire shop and checking your wheel alignment which is easy job for them not expensive for you All this information about this job that I've done, I've put on my uh, website, link in the description. So you get full description with images, uh, with uh, explanation, step-by-step -step guide. You can generate PDF uh, file for you, so you can print it out, go to the garage and do it yourself without remembering all this video. Just link, check link in description. Thank you for watching.